There's gonna be some more footage of my dogs in those outfits. More on that in a moment. It's another story time with your favorite storyteller, Big Papa Kenobi. In today's anecdote, I'm gonna to talk to you about an example of something that people see as angle shooting, as sharking, as as unsporting in many ways, when in reality it's quite legitimate within the rules, except for the one opponent I'm gonna talk about. One of the biggest dickheads I've ever had the misfortune of playing against. And I'm saying that because of one small action they took but I think it was pretty dickish. A tale of salt and opportunistic assholery magic is the gift that keeps on giving. And on the topic of giving gifts, here's a message from this video's sponsor. Now let's talk about Chalice of the Void. God, I fucking love this card. Chalice is what's called a lock or prison piece in this game, similar to things like Blood Moon or Trinisphere. If you're a commander player, it's what people call the stacks archetype, a label given to any card that the wider community doesn't know how to play around or deal with. When you put mana into Chalice of the Void, you put counters on it and allows you to set up a lock piece that stops anyone, just your opponent but you as well, from playing cards of that CMC. So when you put X equals one by paying two mana into it, usually off of a soul land in Legacy, it is X equals one. So one mana spells cannot be cast. A Chalice on one mana will lock any decks trying to cast a ton of one drops out of the game. In modern and especially in legacy that's a lot of decks. Some decks fold really hard to it. Traditionally up until very recently Delver decks have always struggled against Chalice decks. There are cards that do see play that are two mana interactive pieces in games like legacy with things like a braid or brazen borrower that can get you out of that hole. But beyond that Chalice is a bit more complex in how we have to resolve it when playing paper magic. When someone casts a one mana spell into a Chalice on one it means that a trigger goes on the stack. This trigger then, when resolving, counters the spell that was played. Triggered abilities of permanents you control, especially those that are beneficial to you, are your responsibility to track. More on that in a moment. This being a triggered countering of a spell is hugely relevant for a multitude of reasons. It is very different to something that says it cannot be cast, like a meddling mage, or more similarly, a sanctum prelate. Both of them name a thing and it simply cannot be cast. An opposing player cannot put that spell onto the stack within the rules of the game, it's just not legal to do so. There are two branching trees of interaction and gameplay that come out of the fact that it's a trigger that is triggered that you can even fire things into and see if it gets triggered. The first few that all fit into the same camp aren't really controversial. There are spells that still can be cast which bring other benefits. Sometimes you just want to cast one drip cantrips into the chalice allow them to be countered and go to the bin because it allows you to fuel a delve threat down the line. Traditionally a Gurmag but in more recent years Murktide Regent. A creature that can be cast for cheaper if you exile things from your graveyard. So you want to fill your graveyard up. This too can be used to enable threshold so that things like Cabal Ritual can make you five mana. Alternatively you may have a young PZ or Monastery Mentor in play to cast spells that will be countered will still trigger the casting a spell trigger getting you bodies or prowess triggers for you to win the game sometimes you just go all in on having your spells counted but win with board presence and pressure and another fringe case is when you cast a creature off of a cavern of souls or a spell off of a you or use a veil of summer these spells can no longer be counted they do trigger the chalice the trigger from the chalice is put onto the stack it resolves and the spell is not counted because it can't be and then the spell remains, resolves, and the creature comes into play or the spell takes effect. Sanctum Prelate and Meddling Mage and similar effects never more and such, they just stop those things dead. And it's really interesting to see the difference in those things. It's almost like magic is this deeply complex and rewarding game to master. When magic is good, it's the best. However, we now come to the controversial side of Chalice of the Void what's called chalice checking. Like I said earlier, you do have to remember your own triggers. It's not on your opponent to do so. Only when a trigger would be uniquely uh, detrimental to you, like life loss, for example, are you expected to remember it because not remembering it gives you an advantage. If there's a trigger that if you were to forget it would not give you an advantage, you can in essence miss it. Even things that don't say may in the wording. It's just how magic has come along to have a rule set that is clean and works in a competitive environment because then you have to go back and reset things where people miss triggers. If you miss a trigger, it's on you. In many ways, it warrants and rewards people for practicing and learning their cards. Last week's video, where I talked about being accused of cheating for letting my opponent miss young pyromancer triggers, I think is an interesting video. Go watch that. It sort of uh, looks at this in a bit more depth. This video has got a different angle to take on. If your opponent were to cast a brainstorm and there's a chalice on one in play, you just say, okay, the spell has resolved. They cast the spell, you say, sure, okay, or right, whatever confirmation it is, and you miss out saying, oh, chalice trigger, or no, it's countered by the chalice, you're fucked. Now this is where it gets muddy. In many ways, this encourages you to practice, like I said. But sometimes checking someone in a late game scenario is a legitimate way to try and break out of a lock or win a game that you have no, no chance of winning. And that's within the rules. 
so you get to the long long game you get to a really complicated board state and sometimes you will chalice check someone and they'll miss the chalice and your spell resolves and then they kick themselves immediately and you're like haha I win because you forgot how one of your game pieces works. It's a, it's a weird one. Ultimately, as someone who loves to jam Mono Red Prison and other variants of Chalice decks in Legacy, this has become a occupational hazard, if you will. Something to be wary of and keep in mind I traverse the side events and occasional GP over the years. I believe that beating someone in a casual game, FNM or under, because they missed a trigger is scummy. In Commander, I will just opt if my table is pretty casual, just to put triggers back on the stack and let it go. But above FNM in the competitive setting, it's just how magic works. And like I said, it's kind of the cleanest way to make the rules work in a paper setting. And bearing in mind on Magic the Gathering Online, you can't miss triggers. So this is a uniquely paper situation. Sometimes though, there's a player that comes along, an opponent that comes along, and they use this to their advantage in a way that others would perceive quite rightly, to be fucking dickish. <gasps> Come with me on an adventure back to GP Birmingham pre-COVID. I think it was 2018, 2019. I forget what year we went into the pandemic at this point, because it's been so fucking long. These were the halcyon days, the glory days of GPs, where there was fucking tons of them on. I used to go to a load of them, one every month or two months, because I'm lucky enough for this to be my job. And I'll play inside events and meet other legacy players and modern players, and it was lovely. I am 2-0 in a morning or midday pod uh, legacy side event. Normally in the side events, especially for the Channel 5 events when they were on, what would happen is you'd win two rounds and then you'd ID or you'd um, split with your opponent. Everyone knew the drill. Hell, in the later days, they even made it that you could just tick a box if that's what you want to do so they could pair you with people that wanted to do that so the players that wanted to play out to try to get 3 0 could. Anyway, I get paired to this guy, I want to split, they say no. That's fine. The, the splitting thing is just so that you can get your prizes evenly, no one's putting anything on the line for the third round, you can go get lunch and then come back for your next legacy side event. Just get two games in when you win, get some prizes, get your next two games in. This player didn't want to, and ultimately that's fine. There are players that have come to play and win, and that is okay. There's no judgment there. However, when the conversation was had, they were quite miserable and moody and quite negative and again i don't judge my opponents for being that way sometimes people are having a bad fucking day but this guy was making my play experience from that point onwards miserable they're pretty grumpy they're pretty quiet and they're not giving out very warm energy so we shuffle up and play and of course i try to invigorate them by playing a chance to the void on one they counter it it was a daze on the play or a force of will or something and i slam another one on turn two and that resolves I remember them being visibly frustrated and annoyed about this. They were playing either Delver or Blue-White Control of some kind. Either way, it's one of the two decks alongside Sherentel that can really struggle with so many cantrips and one mana spells into Chalice decks. So they were not happy to play against me on Chalice. Hell, they might have even known who I was and wasn't a fan of my content. They are salty, they are audibly and visibly frustrated. I deploy a Rabble Master, I play a Chandra or something, some four mana threat, maybe a Khan. And before you know it, from behind my charts on one, the game is over, and my red three and four drops have rubbed them into the dirt. Game two isn't as easy for me, unfortunately. The problem with the Chalice decks is they play a shit ton of mana, so sometimes you'll play a lock piece if your opening hand isn't good enough, and then you won't find a threat for quite some time, just playing mana and lock pieces. This is how this game went, and it visibly upset and annoyed my opponent. The air was bad, and I felt like we're under some sort of pressure. I remember it being so negative for the round three of a three round side event at a Grand Prix. It was pretty shit. I'm suffering at a time from hay fever and asthma quite badly. The hay fever has actually brought me on to have asthma at this point and I've got an inhaler in my bag. A friend of mine, George, English George, comes over and he makes some comment about my board state. That is messy. That I need to represent it better. That I shouldn't need to be looked after. He's joking of course but I'm run down and miserable so I snap at him and I'm a bit of a dick. And after the game, I actually have to pull George aside and say, look, mate, I'm sorry. That wasn't called for. He was just trying to have a bit of banter. He was trying to lighten the air, I believe. And I reacted in the bad way. That's on me, George. Even to this day, I feel bad about that interaction. The game is a slog. And I'm also annoyed because I'm just not drawing any of my threats. I need to draw Rabble Masters or Planeswalkers to kill them. And all I'm doing is drawing the fucking prison pieces of mana. Like I said, that's 50% of the deck. It's one of the downsides of playing prison. And normally, I'd be okay with that. Sometimes you make your bed and have to lie on it by your deck choices and hand choices and mulligan choices but i'm a hostage in this game my opponent is a miserable miserable bastard and i am not enjoying myself the important thing to note is that my opponent is not casting spells into my chalice they evidently got counter magic in their hand and one drop spells and they're not chalice checking me they're even discarding the hand size at the end of turns that was the bit that was really bizarre so a little bit later maybe turn six seven eight of game two 
I am wheezing and coughing a little bit, <laughs> a bit like I am now. So I reach for my asthma inhaler in my bag and I'm rummaging for it, evidently distracted. At which point, my opponent decides to cast a ponder. I immediately see what the fuck is going on. I take a bit of a, a second to compose myself. I ask them to pause, I, or maybe make a gesture if I remember correctly. I puff a little bit, I inhale, I exhale, I inhale, exhale, and then I say chalice, trigger. Uh, <laughs> I could tell they had taken the opportunity to chalice check me only when they thought I was distracted by the need to take some fucking medicine. It's also funny because at this point we're in game two, we're in like turn six or seven, like I said, they discarded to hand size. In game one, they didn't chalice check me. In game two, they up to this point had not chalice checked me. They didn't bother when George was pissing me off and I had snapped unnecessarily at him. They didn't chalice check me because they were distracted too. They waited until they were completely focused, saw an opening and went for it. And that is pretty fucking scummy. Now, I believe, and again, this bit I don't remember so well, but I believe I won that game. So I walked away not too annoyed, other than the fact that they tried to charge check me whilst taking medicine. And I mentioned it to George as well, who was watching the second half of that game. And he didn't really notice because he'd only seen the second half of that round. He hadn't seen the first game where he didn't charge check me. So the pattern wasn't clear, right? I also apologize profuse to George for telling him to fuck off and shut up. But the point is, Challenge checking is part of magic, but you don't do it when someone is fucking distracted with taking a medicine or like having a, some sort of attack or reaction to something or coughing or spluttering. That's fucking bad. At the time, I couldn't say for certain that that was the case. I couldn't, I didn't want to. Not that I couldn't, but I didn't want to point the finger of blame. I've told this anecdote a few times since. I told it to my Discord server, to, to the higher tier patrons that get to hang out with me once a, a week and talk magic with me. And a few of them, especially the ones that are judges, said I should have probably reported it because they would have got a uh, unsporting conduct minor offence. Because that is <laughs> the definition of unsporting conduct. But I didn't. And to this day I kind of regret it, but now I'm at the point where I'm such a big brain egotistical fuck that I probably would. But also I also want to check myself. I joke that I'm a big brain egotistical prick, but I never want to just assume that I'm in the right. This could be something that I saw and perceived, but in reality, the opponent just was frustrated and went for their final chalice check. But it just happened, it just happened to line up with the point where I took my medicine. Okay, in this circumstance, I'm sure the guy was being a prick. But the point is, in the moment, I always try to give people the benefit of the doubt. And maybe that's a fucking sign of weak. Anyway, that's chalice checking, a weird fringe case of corner angle shooting that's okay within the rules. It's a thing that's established in Legacy as a common thing, but then there's that added layer of doing it when your opponent's distracted with something outside of the game is not cool. And I think it's an interesting anecdote. So I wanna hear what you think down below. How do you feel about chalice checking in general? And if you disagree with me about chalice checking when someone's coughing and spotting and trying to take an asthma inhaler, then you're probably a bad person. So let me know in the comment section what you think feel about chalice checking. And have you had an opponent that was worse than this? An opponent that took an opportunity at some point? Did you just accidentally stab yourself in the arm with a knife? And they're like, oh, I guess I'll chalice check you now. Have you had a situation like that? Let me know. Thanks for watching, everybody. And a big shout out to Established Titles for helping support the channel by sponsoring this content. I'll see you all soon. Ta-ta for now.